Seems right. Okay, so we have 26 right here. That's our time. I'm sorry, it's our distance. 26 our distance. So what we're going to do now is come around. We need to find 93. That's our ground speed. So 90. 91. You guys can't see that. 90, 91, 92, 93. Right here is our time. So that arrow goes towards distance. One. If you put it towards B, it should be the same. If you put it on 93, it gives you like a very good answer. Does it give you a different one? Yeah. yeah. That's why we were saying the different time is we're putting it on 93. So now we're going to come around to 23. Yeah, you put it on 95. You're right, I did. Sorry. 93. Good. Yeah. Okay. Was the distance was 15, yeah. 26 nautical miles. 26 is right here, mm -hmm. the bottom. So yeah, how many minutes? 16.8, 17 minutes, something like that. Yeah. Say that again? Yeah. But if you do it the other way, it can't be 21. Yeah. yeah, it's not right. So you have to use it for the distance or for the ground speed. Okay. Pointers towards speed. And let's do 122 knot ground speed for 6.2 minutes. <coughs> Right. How many minutes? 6.2. 6.2 minutes. Yep. So. How far? Well, this is six right here, right? Sixty is six minutes, six point zero. Mm -hmm. Five point five, six point zero. It says six point two. Six point two. So how far? Twelve point five miles. Twelve point five, twelve point six, something like that. Okay. He's having a hard time. I just didn't understand that last one. But can you give the numbers you gave me? Yeah, I'll write it up here for you guys. Why did you go where the 60s were? What do you mean? For minutes. Well, it's either 60 or it's 6. Okay. Let's do another one. Throw one out here. Which one do you want to try to do? Kind of messed up the first. Let's do a different ground speed one. So that's when you guys got it. You're gonna be doing on your um, quiet planning. Say again. Seventy-six. Seventy-six ground speed. And let's do. Um, you're flying mid distance. Thirteen miles. Thirteen miles. All right. Ten minutes 
Uh, so those are points. So every point one is six minutes. Okay. So 76, 13 nautical miles. Ten point two. Ten point two, ten point three, somewhere there. Okay. Close enough. Ten point two or ten point three, you pick. It's really not vital that you have you know, point one is not a big difference. Okay. And it's six minutes, but if you wanted it super accurate, would you be using this? No. 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 What's the benefit of this in flight? Quickly use it. No batteries. It's not going to die on you. Okay. Let's do another one. Let me throw a ground speed or a distance or a time. 82. 82 what? Ground speed. Whatever. Okay. Let's do a distance. 13 13 miles. We just did it 13, didn't we? Oh, yeah. 25? Sure. Okay, 25 nautical miles. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have it yet? Mm -hmm. So you got, she's, so she sees what's going on. Or Mike, do you want to let her borrow yours? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, what was that? Oh, it's not the same. Yeah. 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 I want to hear from different people. Uh, let's do. Can you give me a distance. Big distance. Bigger. 173. <laughs> okay. Give me a ground speed. Cool. 103. All right. How long is that going to take? <laughs> so what do we use first? What is the pointer going to? Pointer is going to your ground speed. Yeah. Well, that's right. So it's 130, so it's about, that's right. But that makes sense. That's kind of the That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Since we added those more, so we have to add those more down here, I guess, is what my question is. Yes, okay, so I'm getting 93 here. Since we added decimals here and here, right? So 93, 60, 60, 60, 60, do you have to add a zero here? So no, it's just like it's going to be 90 points on my phone. Yeah, 93. Yeah. Wait, 93. Yeah, 93. Yes, 93. 93 minutes. 93 minutes. That makes sense because, you know, if you're going to start. Right. That's yeah. where you have to do conversion. Is it going to be a decimal or is it going to be a point? So yeah. it's nine. Oh, no, yeah, it would be 9.3 or 93. 
So yeah, you're in, right? Okay. Maybe three minutes makes sense. Yeah. So what's the answer? Always do the standard. Ninety three minutes. minutes. Like, if you say nine hundred thirty minutes, it's not going to take nine minutes. Hour and a half. Yeah. 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 Ninety three. Ninety three. Ninety three. Divide them. Yeah, but those are ninety one, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four. On a. Guess who has to relearn this every time he teaches it? You. Stuff is not, we, we don't use it a lot, all right? Yep. And as after you get through this, unless you become a flight instructor, I seriously doubt you'll use it again. When I bought it, they said, get the cheapest one, you'll never use it. More than likely. <laughs> commercial, you use it again, because the private and the commercial, almost the same check right. Just commercial is a little bit tighter on the standards. You still have to do the same nav log for commercial. You will use it one more time. All right, <laughs> instrument maybe not. Uh, it's possible you might have to use it for that, but um, okay. I you, I use a digital one now. I honestly I do all my flight plan now for flight for flight. So. <laughs> 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 so of course, yeah. I still know how to do it because you want to know the basics. What if something happens? I'm screwed. I, I, was screwed. I didn't treat my calculator dies because mine's in yeah. Colorado and storage. So I don't even have an old school E6B anymore. It's not mine. Right. Thousands of miles away, like if you right? But it's important to know because this stuff's going to be on your test. The test is referencing what you see on here because you see how accurate this is, right? Super accurate, not so much. But the test is going to reference things off of this, so the inaccuracies are accounted for in the test, which I didn't. All right. Okay. Any questions on this so far? We can keep going. I mean, we got more and more and more. You're going to get to practice this again, though, with flight planning on Thursday. But if you want another example, let me know, please. Yay or nay? Yes? Okay. We'll do another one. Ground speed. You want to figure out ground speed, distance, or um, speed? I'm sorry, or time? Distance to Seattle. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> You're up time. Time? On one tank. Then one tank's distance. Well, that's the next one when we talk about fuel. So we haven't done fuel yet. Jumping ahead. All right. All right, so you guys want to figure out the time for something? Yeah. So you've got a nice tailwind. You got 135 knot ground speed. And you are, you would set, we said time, so you're going to be flying from, you're 32 nautical miles. Okay? Because this is a normal leg that you will encounter on a flight around here. Ground speed to the so what's the ground? Or so what's the time? What are we trying to figure out? Yeah, fourteen point two. Fourteen point two. Time, right? Finally. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did it rotate on you? I don't know. Well, that works. I'm going to say 134. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, what is it? 14.3. 14. 14. Yeah. Which is 19 seconds. Okay. <laughs> All right. Another one? You do you get it? You okay? If you're not, we can do a couple more. And if, if one person's not getting it, I guarantee you there's other people here not quite getting it. You might block you. No, you're sure. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to do a ground speed one. You might see distance you think between here and Tulsa. Uh, Hold for flight. 75. And we want time. Is that you guys said you want a time one? No. So no. Like saying you want to go a known distance and a known amount of time. So what ground speed do you need? Okay. 
That's, and it takes, uh, let's say, 52 minutes. Okay, 75 nautical miles, 52 minutes. Under 75. That's 75 is your ground speed. It's a distance. 75 nautical miles. Yeah. And then our time. What's our time? 52 minutes? So 52 is 375, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to find your ground speed. Your ground speed is in the air. And the, yeah, the arrow goes that ground speed. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm sorry. Christ, see? What I say? Last three learning every single time. Uh, it is a good sign. Uh, yeah. You're not going to die. There you go. Oh, okay. So you took the 52 and You guys come up here and do the rest of the class. Oh, yeah, and then 25. Okay. We're all learning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have an excuse. My brain is shot right now. <laughs> Get this man's coffee. Get this man's coffee. All right, who's, who have I thoroughly screwed up on this? All right, good. We're all on the same boat. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're piloting for it matters or anything. It's not like you can't just own this, right? Why isn't it a license? When is it? All right, I'll show you. I'll show you why. Well, we can show you why. This is streaming, dude. Oh, Justin. Justin, do you want me to turn your camera down? Do you think that people are down? No, I asked him. Show me why. I asked him why. All right. Show me on here. Tell me when it expires. What's that? As long as you continue with your request. Nope. Every year, so. Nope. But if you're not a child, it's still on the ground. Right. That affords your speed. I don't see that. I can start. Now I'm questioning myself. So we've got date of issue. Right. We have a, what is that? Certificate number. Weird. Commercial pilot, nationality, date of birth. Yes, I'm old. The weight is off. Uh, Living in the past. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and on the back, you see on the back here, besides Orville and Wilbur Wright, we got airplanes, single and multi engine land, instrument rating, limitations, <laughs> none. I'm English proficient ish. Okay. Now, there's only one that I would consider, why well, I don't quite understand why they don't call it something else. <coughs> what is the limitation on this one? Limitation. 
valid only when accompanied by pilot certificate number 3799150 expires 31 May 2019. Which one is this certificate? Let's see if I certificate. I have to have to have to have to have my commercial with it. And the CFI certificate expires every two years. You have to renew that one. But your student pilot one doesn't expire. Private pilot doesn't expire. Your commercial pilot doesn't expire. Your instrument rating doesn't expire. <laughs> None of those other certificates expire. Okay. What about if you're medical, like if you can't pass your medical? Still have a certificate. You, can't you just can't exercise it as pilot in command. Mm -hmm. Or what can you do now? Don't need a waiver. Special. I know. You say he won't worship you. Yeah. We say things. So hey, you know, you teach ground school. Only if you have this one. Um. So you're basically saying or, it doesn't expire. It's or you have uh, wrong one. Sorry. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> really thick. Yeah. <laughs> not in my wallet. His aviation wallet. I do not carry my certificates in my wallet. Things where you hold all your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Turn the camera to point at that. Stays in my wallet bag. <laughs> no, it's, if my flight something ever happened to my flight bag, I'm be screwed. How? Valuable is our logbook. Add up all the cost of all those flights. Hundred thousand dollars. Priceless, because it is almost irreplaceable. You can kind of sort of get some of your information back. A lot of effort. Yeah, it's do not do not use your logbooks it's and back them up. Do digital. Do okay, do digital, and in conjunction with if you take do, photos. I highly recommend that digital and um, paper. You can't do the doors. Can't actually. Yeah. That's what I was told. See, my my logbook has stolen. I was told. Even if I had digital copies of my. You can. Fourth flight, you can actually put the logbook in there, right? That are signed by your instructor. Yeah. So. And you can. But you can export it. Whatever makes it easier. It's in fourth flight. It's lost. It's a digital logbook. In fourth flight, that you get is the best best book I have. And you I'm not going to store it on that budget that you can't export it out of the phone. If you were to give up your uh, subscription, you can still export your clock hours. Mm -hmm. I was told you could export your. Pretty sure you can export like everything. So you can. I was told you can export your hours. 40 an hour. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. Not sorry, 40 hours. Because they were saying like, if you want to. I don't know. Jack said something I'd have to look. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it but that's why I keep some. Yeah, I've learned my lesson on that. All right. We need to get to the fuel stuff. All right, fuel calculations. All right. So, fuel and the time and your gallons per hour, okay? Yep. So if you actually look at if you ever get confused by an instructor, because we like to do that to you guys, <laughs> look on here real fast. Find the side here where it talks about the uh, for time and distance, and it shows the speed. What's the little carrot pointing at? What's it pointing at? Speed, speed, and gallons per hour. Yeah, so if you want to know your speed, you're going to read that off of the pointer like you guys just reminded me. Shut up. Sounds sometimes. What's it going to point you for our fuel calculations? <coughs> gallons, per gallons per hour. Gallons per hour. Okay. So this does a really good job. The, this one's the ASA, I think. Jepson. The Jepson one is really good with, I like how they describe it. Which what brand do you have, ASA? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. ASA tells you, and go ahead and read it out loud for the airspeed one real quick. Uh, the airspeed correction? Loud. Nice and loud for everybody. Set press altitude opposite uh, C. And, uh, uh, this degree one. Celsius. 
Okay, so that's actually doing the density altitude. Is not showing. Oh, here you go. Set miles per hour or not. So it is showing you here the arrow. Okay. And then distance and time. Distance is outer, time is inner. So it does, even the ASA one does do a good job of showing you how to actually do the calculations. And it's on the actual flight computer. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you're just looking at time. Well, it's right there. So where do you put the distance on? So this one is in the same one. Then we're going to need. Or we're going to be going at like 10 or 20. Yeah, 10.6 gallons. So, what is he saying? He didn't write any numbers up. So, so if we were at yeah. imperial gallons, we're, no, we're not doing it. So, lining, we're lining that arrow up with however many hours we're going to line it. So, I guess these are our hours here. All right, so for fuel. Hours. I'm not even going to go through this. So somebody, let's find out what the total fuel used is with 7.2 gallon per hour in 12 minutes, okay? How much fuel are we burning when we burn 7.2 gallons per hour for 12 minutes? One point four five ish. What would you guys do in that situation if it's two? What if it was one point four? Two. I was still round up. What's worse to calculate you're burning more fuel than you actually are when it's like point one, point two here, or no, no less, and then maybe short down the road if you're kind of gonna be. I mean. Should we ever run out of fuel in flight? No. Why? Because you planning out for your flight plan. And it's a regulation that we have at least 30 minutes of an extra for uh -huh. VFR day, 45 minutes for VFR night. So even if you're off, you shouldn't be off by 30 minutes worth. You should run the tanks. So do you only fill up how much you need then? No. No. Well, I mean, plus the 30 minutes. I if I would rather take more. Here's the way I see it. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This goes with runway length, altitude, and fuel. So is there any reason you wouldn't top off every time? If it's outside my weight. Okay. If I'm at close reason. to Max Gross, I would go to Max Gross. But other than that. Correct. Well, now, if I was close to Max Gross and it was going to be kind of tight on fuel, I'd take some more weight out of the plane so I can take more fuel. Right. That's what I would do. <laughs> well, let's or, say you're just going on a flight, no, you're not worried about weight, just fill it up. Typically, yeah. Okay. Now, if I'm at, you know, three quarter tanks and I'm going up for an hour and a half flight, no. Okay. Because we've got at that Time. point at least four hours of fuel. Okay. So, but those are situations you. But I would rather not go up with less than half tanks for a two-hour flight. You know, yes, we probably have enough fuel, but those needles are starting to look a little low in that plane. Mm -hmm. and I start feeling a little uncomfortable. As you should. All right. What's the fuel burn? With 12 gallons, you use 12 gallons in seven over seven minutes. How much fuel are you burning per hour? How many gallons per hour? 12 gallons for seven minutes. 12.3. I would agree. I would agree. 10.5. So I want to know the gallons per hour. For 12 gallons in seven minutes. So 103. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It shouldn't be that much. It should be 1.2 gallons. I'm sorry. 1.2 gallons. Because you're not going to burn 12 gallons in seven minutes unless you find something a whole lot bigger. It's just dumping the fuel. So, sorry. We fix that. 
That's what happens when you build PowerPoints like really fast in this in this. Right, Joe? I, I always yep. Okay. Otherwise, it's like a blackboard. All right. Smart. Okay. So, can you do this one under the? I'm not sure what arrows are looking at. Are we looking at U.S. gallons or the imperial gallons? No, you're looking at the pointer. Which is the question? Well, yeah, there's multiple ones. Yes, so, two. you look at right here. There's imperial. There's. Oh, hold on. Right here, gallons per hour. Okay. <laughs> the arrow is always going to point to how much fuel you're burning per hour. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the fuel burned over the time. Okay, so out here is going to be the fuel burned, and this area is going to be your time. So, 1.2 gallons in seven minutes. So I'm going to put, and find, here's 1.2, okay? 1.2 is right there. And there's seven, correct? So what's the arrow pointing to? Don't worry about the imperial or anything like that. We just want the numbers. In mine might have shifted. Is it the seven then? Yes, it'd be a seven zero. Per one point. Then you go one point two. Yes, 1.3 gallons, or 10.3 gallons, because we've got 10 and 11, so it's 10, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. 10 or 1? 10. 10.3 what? gallons? What? Per hour. Okay. Because you've flown for 7 minutes, and you've burned 1.2 oh. gallons. Okay. Just with that. <laughs> yeah, this is where we're getting the conversions. Yeah. But if you think about it, you know, you can't be burning 1.3 gallons per hour when you burn 1.2 gallons in seven minutes. And you probably know so, the burn rate. Yeah, and, you, and okay. one of you guys pointed out that yeah. you can't, if you're minutes, burning 12 gallons in seven minutes, you can't have a 1.3 or a 10.3 is going to have to be 103 gallons per hour. So, so that's where you get the decimals all right. You're realizing that's okay. how you, I, that all right. obvious, I clearly made an error. Well, you should have a general idea of how much your plane burns per hour, right? Yes, you're gonna. You should know what you're burning. So we, when we're doing this, you're verifying. You just actually. So when we find out the gallons per hour, that's gonna be actual. What you're doing in flight planning is gonna be estimated. So you should have an idea of what you're burning gallons per hour off the POH. Mm -hmm. Then you find out what you actually did in flight. Right. Because maybe you have an older airplane in. The RPMs, you know, they have to just burn a little more gas. Or you didn't lean it out the way that the manufacturer recommends. Maybe you burn less. Maybe you burn more. Always different than predicted. Or the wind's always right. taking longer or shorter or whatever. Right. Okay. All right. How, what is the duration? It's the last one. Possible duration of 20 gallons remaining and 6.4 gallons per hour. Let's see this last one real quick. Duration, I think I Oh yeah, 18. I got right. Uh, some 18 minutes. Oh, cool. Well, no. Yeah, no. It's only six an hour. Yeah, it's 20. Yeah, it's 20. Easier to do some math on Three hours and change. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just did on the map there. Six point four. So on this thing, so it's six point four gallons an hour. So gallons here. So you can check the point. So three point you're looking at this one then. Yep. Oh, that's uh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is the if you look under the GPH 18. is the uh, is power. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I've been trying to figure out that whole time. We're finally there. Why it says hour time. We're trying to figure out. 18 minutes. Well, yeah. Pushing it. It's almost all successful. It's a super idea. 180 minutes. Yeah. That's when it all adds up. Yeah. And that's where just that playing around with it, you know, with the long breaks. Not using it. This is where we got nothing. He's got one. Here you go, Mary. Here you go. The wheels wheel. So what are we looking at? Well, <laughs> three hours and what, 10 minutes right here? So. Just under three hours and ten minutes. Okay. Three hours and eight minutes, something like that. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. You got eight three hours. I'd accept three hours too. I'm not. You got. Yeah. <laughs> good. Very good. All right. Who? Any questions? Good? Everybody good so far on this? Sure. How would I stop using anything? Yeah, sorry about that. All right, cool. Airspeed corrections. So these ones, good. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I just, it's just another way to calculate density altitude and, um, True air speeds, okay? We're not going to go through it unless you guys want to, but it is in the slides. It's explained on the eastern speed, right? Density altitude is not too terrible. It's going to be based off of temperature. And so here's your temperatures are uh, right here, and your pressure altitude or your pressure altitude with the temperature, and that's going to help you with the density altitude in the middle, okay? And then your speeds are going to be read out here. True air speeds are going to be on the outside. Calibrated air speeds on the inside, or you can use your um, use the indicated air speed and the calibrated air speed. So give you a rough idea what your true air speed is. Okay. But your true air speed is what your performance data in the POH is going to give you. It's going to give you it at true air speed. So you really shouldn't be needing to calculate it out. But if you do need to, this is how you can do it. Okay. All right, so this is the a big one. I told you before, we need ground speed to figure out time for each leg, and then we need the time to figure out the fuel burn, okay? So this is your reference point, this is your grommet, okay? Your true index is up here. This does not move. This moves, all right? So when we're calculating out wind, you're gonna, let's, I'm gonna give you a real world, we'll do a real world example, okay? I think that's what it's for. Uh, actually, might be anything else. Hey, it's yours. <laughs> you already got one set up. You have a flight plan, we've got winds already. You didn't write the winds up here, did you? Wait until tomorrow. That's fine. Well, I've got an hour there, though, to hour. I can't sign you off for this. This is not filled out. You gotta do the uh, forecast. Uh, forecast? Yeah. Okay. It's not so loud. I can't sign you off of that. Like last time I just woke up, did the winds came and saw you and <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not gonna be here. Remember that's why we're doing it tonight. Okay. It's all all positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're gonna just do it uh, for the winds right now. All right, I'm gonna write the winds down. Uh, so we're gonna fly from here. We're not gonna. I'm gonna let them figure out this part. So you guys, Joe knows the rules. You don't get to answer unless I actually call on you, right? You don't put an answer up. You can help the just around you, maybe. Try not to unless they need the help. Go cheese with the help. Is All right. What altitude are we gonna fly from here to talking about picking altitude that you deem would be safe and prudent? Thirteen. Good Lord Almighty, I just heard three different answers. Which one is it? Four. 
I like 4,000. 3,000. 4,000. 1,700. Per winning zero. I don't care, actually. So 4,000, you can go 4,000. Does that work for a flight up there? No. Why doesn't it work? If you want, I'll even use the digital. Okay. So you, yeah. When, Mike, when do you need plus 500 odd or even when you're above 3,000? 3,000. Which is it? MSL or AGL? Joe, you want to help him out? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's MSL, when I take off at the Centennial Airport, which is 5,885 feet, I have to immediately fly. <laughs> Evens plus 500, or if I'm going to the west, and odds plus 500 if I'm going to the east. Ah, it's AGL. So if we're flying at 3,000 feet, because like, are we within 3,000 feet of AGL? Well, we're saying 3,000 feet MSL for the altitude, right? What is the altitude of the train we're flying over? Is it sea level the whole way? No. Oh, so if it's not sea level, we're at 3,000 feet MSL. Are we within 3,000 feet AGL? Yes. And we fly, did we have to follow that rule? I thought we picked 4,000. If we were doing 4,000, yes. We would what is this rule that we're? If you are, so the VFR cruising altitudes yes. are positive, or um, once you're above 3,000 feet AGL, you need to fly a, an even heading plus 500 on a westerly flight, and odds plus 500 on an easterly flight. So for the easterly, it's um, 0 through 179, and then 180 through 359. Okay, those are the, the two. So due north, 360 or 0, all the way around to 179 degrees. That is the easterly side. So if you're flying anywhere, you're... Um, your magnetic heading is anywhere in there. You need to be flying an odd altitude plus 500. What regulation is that? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Joe, find it for her, because I don't have it. <laughs> it's 91, one something, I think. I'd have to look it up. Oh, all right, I don't fully understand what you mean. Plus 500, like, plus plus 500, 500 feet. feet. So 3,000 feet is an odd number, right? Yeah. You have to add 500 feet to that. So 3,500. What's, What's the purpose? Vertical separation between traffic. Because all instrument traffic will fly evens on the zero. So say 4,000 feet or 7,000 feet. And then US VFR traffic will be flying 7,500 or 5,500. So there's vertical separation. Okay, so there's minimum 500 feet between you and any other traffic flying in an opposite direction. Once you're above 3,000 feet. Above 3,000 feet AGL. Above 3,000 feet above the ground. So you have to first know when you are above that, below uh, any flight level. Because um, that's yeah, we're talking VFR stuff and, you know, so VFR. So. Um, Is there the same rule like north and south? North falls under the east side. South falls under the west side. It's 0 through 179, <laughs> 180 through 359. Headings. Yes. And actually, you don't want to mention something. What's really nice is if you get a good. Why not just even it's and odds? Why plus 500? Because Vertical separation because the IFR. IFR is on the evens and odds without the 500. So if, it, if you have an IFR flight heading one way and you're flying another way, there has to be a vertical separation between you two. Otherwise, you'd be heading on to each other. Or they could be overtaking you and running you over. So there's minimum 500 feet, okay? So, what do you mean? Like, so you mean minimum, but like if you flew more and you like flew like a thousand more, then you just have to readjust. Okay, like, what do you mean? <laughs> Thank you. So, like, minimum 500, so you're at 3,000, and you so minimum 500, so you could fly at 3,900, but then you're like super close to the uh, to the 4,000 mark. You know what I'm saying? So, if you have instruments, but this is a rule to make sure that everybody's going to be following the same rules. And there is going to be error in your altimeters. So I fly an airplane down there that is 100 feet off on regularly. So when I'm flying at 
crossing the inlet at 2,500 feet, I'm actually at 2,600 feet. And if I have instrument traffic above me uh, that's faster than me and going to overtake me, and they're flying at um, 3,000 feet, actually they're going the other way, 3,000 feet going eastbound, I'm going westbound at 26, and there's only 400 feet between. Right. So if you're. But they can't go up because they have VFR traffic above them. That's what I'm saying. So why is it a minimum? It's not just like a, you have to do 500. It is 500. You have to do 500. You keep saying minimum of 500. Because if you're off, you're still going to be closer. Any, so you just want to try to maintain your altitude, that 500 foot separation. Okay. So you can only fly, fly at 3,500, 4,500 feet. Is that what you're trying to think? Past 3,000? Yes. 45, 45, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85. I know, I understand. Thank you. And then, because your VFR, your IFR traffic is going to be flying at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. And once you get up into the flight levels, they're going to actually be flying with 2,000 foot separation between each other. Unless they fly not standing. Yeah, I just didn't understand. I got you. That was where I was going to be. I got you. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's. Yeah, I, I was. I guess I wasn't quite right. understand the question very well. Well, and it's hard for me to ask a specific question that I don't understand. Too. Yeah, and I just. <laughs> All right, let's hear. Let's talk to it. Seven feet. How many feet are in? Oh, well. I will find the rate for you though. All right, plus the winds. So we're, we agree we're doing three thousand feet because that's within three thousand feet AGL. One nine or six at five knots. One nine six. Uh, five six degrees at five kps. Okay. All right. So, find out our wind correction. Put one ninety six. Rotate this bottom part until 196 is underneath your true index, okay? Everybody good? Now, you've got a little hole in it, okay? Call that the grommet. Go ahead and put that on 100. That is your zero point. It's going to be our reference, all right? You look on here. One thick line is at 100, another one at 110, 120, 130, and so on and so forth, okay? So each line in between is worth two, okay? So our winds are at five knots. So what we need to do is count up two lines. That's four knots. So you need to make a mark between four and six, right on this vertical line here, okay? So your mark should be right here, right in between the four and the six knot mark. And just a nice little dot there, okay? Because that is now your wind mark. Questions on that? I'm the most lost anyone's ever been. Oh, yeah. All right, do you have 196 <laughs> under the true index? Yes. Okay. Now, put your little grommet on 100. Yeah. Did you? No, I'll look here. Uh, yeah, I'm outside. Oh, okay. Well, that's what's the way to say. Okay. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 196 at the top. Yeah. Right, yeah, I told you. Slide paper. So you see how you got the so each line. This one is going to be two knots. Okay, so go out and put a mark between the two. Before, and the third. You see the mark? You mean just push a little part? Yeah. Yeah. Because this is the right one. Yeah. Anybody have any issues? Questions on this so far? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. All right, who's got that done? We're not going until we have all hands. Oh, okay, we're seeing more hands now. All right, so, we're relying. so now what we need to do is we're going to rotate to our true heading. Well, Mike says, Mike does not say. Yes, he does. Three, two, six. Actually, let's do three, five, six. Let's do three, five, six. So our true heading is 356 degrees. So now what you're going to do is rotate 
till 356 is on the true head, uh, the true index, okay? So put 356 right here now. So let me throw out a nice. Uh, Mike, what you calculate is your airspeed, 107 knots? True airspeed? We didn't have to jump in land for an hour. You got five knots there, but the pencil mark on there shows from 100. What is that? That's the zero point. He's just putting there to mark the zero point so you can mark the five knots from the grommet. Right, I just saw the pencil mark above it. That would show yeah. 20 knots. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm using our example. Don't. I'm just using this as a visual tool. All right. Does everybody have 356 at the true index? Yeah. Uh, so, like, Mike, where are you guys at? Thing at 196. You already have the wind correction on there. But did you? Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll wait a second. So, how do we jump from 196 to 196? All right. Because now we're going to figure out. What the wind correction angle is and what our ground speed is. So we put the wind on there. Now we're going to apply the wind to our heading. And our heading, our true heading is going to be 356. So that goes under the true index now. Okay. No, not yet. We're going to, I will tell you guys what we're going to do with the dot here in a second. Just get the true heading under the index now. The true heading is 356. This is what we're going to be flying in the airplane. The winds are 196, but we're going to be flying 356. So now we're going to see how the winds are affecting us. Because we already applied the wind on there. So anytime you can use that to figure out your head of the wind correction now for any leg that you fly with these winds. Okay. All right, we good? So our true airspeed is gonna be 106 knots. Or 107 knots, I'm sorry, 107 knots, okay? What you're gonna do now. So you're going to take your little dot and you're going to put that on 107 knots, which should be right about in this region. Okay. Now it does not, I don't want it on the center here unless it's lined up there. You will, you see how the lines curve on both sides. So you just follow those curves and you put it there. Okay. It's going to be between the six and the eight, 106, 108, 107. Is your little dot? Where's your little dot you made for the wind? It's right there. Oh, okay. As long as you can see it. Yeah. You can't see it. So it's that close. Yeah. Okay, cool. As long as you know where the reference point is, that's all that matters. Okay. Good? Yeah, I can't mark on Yeah, these ones are kind of a pain in the yeah. <laughs> but you know well, we got a north hat. We got a ballpark. Okay. It's been good enough for countless so. years. <laughs> <laughs> who, are, who has the mark on their on their 107 knots now? Good. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to read the number underneath the grommet that open that little hole. What airspeed is are you reading that's directly under that hole? I'm hearing a lot of numbers. I'm hearing a lot of numbers. Is the dot the little dot you made should be on 107 knots? Right. So what's the what do you call it? Is the dot above the grommet or bottom? Below the grommet. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, it's below. Below? What's the grommet? The little hole. Okay. Is your dot below it? Your pencil mark. Is it below the little reference? The zero? Okay. Oh, that's right, because I would have rotated it. Yeah, that would make sense. So it's below? Yeah. Well, okay. it's just both parking the dot, you know. Okay. That is your ground speed. Did you make a mark on here for your wins? 
So what we have is, so we got 196. 196. Okay. So we got 196. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so this is yeah. What a nice stream. Well, so now you have your feed yeah. there, and then that <laughs> will make it to set an now, where in relation to the lines going on either side of it is our mark. One to the left? Yes. One to the left, one to the left. Who has anything different? So if you look, you win correction angle. I should tell you on here. Between the center line and the one. So east is least, west is best. I think this is how it's no. So, yeah. So, if it's to the left, so you said one to the left? Minus one, it's minus if you are to the left. Any number you're at on the left is going to be a minus. Any on the right is going to be a plus. So, that is your wind correction angle. It's one degree. Okay? So, we would be using a wind correction angle one degree minus minus one degree so it's one degree to the east just remember right now if it's to the left it's minus if it's to the right it's plus because it's going to come into play next week or on Thursday but there's way more we have to do before we worry about that. Because we have to take some Well, as you know, we're ready to use the Because then we also have to. It's really easy. Yeah. That's a little bit easier. But it's going to change it. It's going to be minus. So it's either way, it's minus. It's minus. That's all I got. You're the next. Questions on that? Good. That was great. Well, I was marking it all wrong. All yeah. I was Really okay, yeah, that yeah, yeah, I was like, right like, they were 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 all right. Yes. <laughs> we are not done with this. We're going to be doing this again on Thursday. Woo!